this is the example we discussed a number of times in the movies and also in class. Okay, suppose we know the shaft design like this, we can easily figure out the uh, diagrams for uh, torque, shear force, and bending moment, and then we can go for stress analysis. Now, let's think about the opposite. Suppose that we only know the forces to be applied, but we have no idea of the shaft structure. Where should we start? Okay. Um, perhaps we can still decide the locations of force applications, but we do not have the diameter. So diameter now is the key for us to decide. Okay. Also think about the, the sh on the shaft, we should also have the, the uh, key and the keyways. To make the things simpler, I just switch the two keyways along the same, uh, same line uh, here. All right. So this place obviously is for gears, and this place is likely for a coupling. Now, we ha we've got a few points to discuss. We may start from here, from this end, okay? We may start from here, we may start from here, we may start from there, okay? So which location is good for us to determine the minimum shaft diameter? So we, once we have a minimum shaft diameter, we can go by the uh, shoulder design, which we're gonna talk about in class, and figure out an entire shaft design. So at this end, Okay, a little bit to the left-hand side, we only have this uh, transverse shear force applied. And we know from stress analysis, this gives us a small uh, 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 shear stress. So it really doesn't help a whole lot. All right, how about this point? Okay, so, the, so here, at this reaction force R2 place, which is, uh, if we go a little bit to the other side, okay, to the left-hand side, okay, to the side, basically, it, you only see the torque application. But if we go to this side, we have torque, we also have bending moment. But bending moment, if, if we go a little bit to, the, to this side, the bending moment is still very small, and this torsional shear stress doesn't contribute a whole lot. Okay, so, you may think, we, why don't we come to the middle, pl middle place, come to this pl location? But at this location, don't forget, we, our shaft has uh, a, a kiwi, that's for sure. On the other hand, we, in, in our design theories, remember we have a, a number of key factors involved. Some of those factors, if we want to determine some of those factors, we need knowledge of the diameter, but now it is not known. So which means it is not very easy for us to determine the diameter at this location. Okay, so key factors, and we have a complicated stress situation. Now we have three types of stresses over here. So which leaves us the choice of these location and this location, as I just discussed to you, all right, at this location, this location over here at, at R2 application, it has not much difference from the, this location where we only have a torque applied. So at this, at this location, for only a torque application, the things could be very simple. So we can start from there. So utilizing the location where we only have a torque applied, we perhaps can design, uh, uh, determine the minimum uh, shaft diameter. I call this from the current time a possible minimum shaft diameter, D. Okay, and to do that, we need a factor of safety, uh, assuming that you can pick up one, let's see, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 uh, things like that, or 1.5, okay. So you pick up a factor of safety and then calculate the minimum shaft diameter at this location. So by what equation? This is very simple, okay. We learned this uh, from class a number of times. Okay, torsional shear stress, we know how to figure out the torsional shear stress, all right? Torsional shear stress, make that to be smaller than a value, which is what? Which is the uh, shear yield limit divided by factor of safety, okay? We define that as a, a tall mean sh shaft, okay? Which means this is the allowable stress for the minimum diameter of the shaft, all right? What is the shear yield limit? You see here, 0.577 times the yield limit, that's what? That is the uh, shear, uh, uh, yield sh shear limit determined from the uh, distortion energy theory. That's the thing we practiced in the homework. Okay, so knowing all those things, we can easily determine a diameter, and this diameter is possibly the minimum diameter we're gonna choose. 
All right. From here, I'm sure we're going to come out a number. Let's say something like 17.24 or things like that. Are we going to really pick up that kind of a number? Perhaps we have to wait for a couple of more things. All right. So first, if there's a key way, we increase the value we calculated from here by three to four percent, three to five percent, or safely three uh, four percent. Things like that in the middle. Okay. Oh, and the other thing is that we don't like the 17.24, 17.29, things like that. So we use integers, okay? And, and uh, better to use preferred numbers, usually, you know, 2, 4, uh, 8, those sort of uh, even numbers, 0 and, uh, and 5 are uh, uh, preferred numbers, okay? However, this is not an end yet. We have to consider more issues. Okay, this is the shaft. This shaft actually is it itself is not lonely in, in the entire mechanical system. Perhaps this shaft end mates with the other one, okay, because here I have a coupling. So the other side of a coupling may link to the other, uh, a different shaft. And that different shaft may be la much larger than this one. It may have uh, some, uh, something that require the diameter of uh, this shaft to be larger than what we have uh, uh, calculated. So we've got two choices. One is our modified uh, minimum diameter from calculation, which considers the Kiwi effect and uh, round off to the, uh, the integers, okay? And then we have to consider there, mi there might be a special structure requirement, which I call that DS, okay? So compare this two, all right? Choose the larger one. Okay, the larger of those two has to be our minimum diameter for this shaft. So once we know that, we can go to design the shoulders of each places and then complete the shaft design, which is a thing we're gonna do in class. See you in class. <laughs>